Hey everyone, welcome back. Our next guest is a Boricua poet from Brooklyn whose work has been featured in Muzzle Magazine, Winter Tangerine, Latina Magazine, We Are Me Too, and Tidal. Um, and that's just to name a few. But today she joins us to discuss her debut novel, When We Make It. Hey, a story redefining what it means to make it through the lens of a first generation Puerto Rican eighth grader. The story, which I happen to be a fan of, actually touches upon mental illness, sexual assault, food insecurity, and gentrification. And joining us to tell us more, we welcome author and poet Elizabeth Velasquez. Woo! Thank you, Rina. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. If we had an audience, that's what you would be hearing. <laughs> Instant Hi. fan, instant fan, instant fan. Instant <laughs> fan. And what I Yo. didn't say is that it's rhythmically written because that is really what got me hooked. Yeah. It's rhythmic. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for reading the book. Thank you so much, like I said, for being a part of so many people's making it. Um, and I am just... I'm, I'm, thank you for championing it, and thank you for having me. I can't wait to talk about yeah, it. I'm in tears. I'm in tears because, right, so while the book is a fiction, um, it, it's clear to me that there's a lot of details in there that really have you, I can tell, you experienced some here and there um, in your upbringing. And, um, and aside from the bravery and the boldness, the humility, and most importantly, the resilience that is really represented in this book, it, it, it's going to really serve a lot of young uh, urban individuals. And I say urban because it's an urban story, even though it's Boricua centric, it, it's an urban story for those who um, have had to overcome adversity. Yeah, thank you so much. I, um, yes, the book was uh, definitely inspired by my own life. Um, so the story follows a young uh, protagonist. Her name is Sarai. Um, and she's a young woman who's just trying to figure out what it means to make it um, in the neighborhood that she's growing up with, with all of the things that you mentioned that were happening. Um, what does it mean to move forward and, and keep going even when you're not really sure what that means? Um, so yeah, I um, I grew up asking myself a lot of questions about that very um topic like what what am i gonna be you know the the question that we're all asked is like what do you want to be when you grow up and you're like i don't know like you know and then you have all of these um people telling you what you should be or what you need to be in order to uh you know make it and so um i had a lot of those questions i wanted to be a lawyer when i was like 10 11 you know my my parents wanted me to be like a doctor you know, and so I actually, at the age of 16, I had a baby and I had to leave school um, to uh, look for a job to support my daughter. And so all of that was out the window. It was a scandal. It was, Arena, it was a scandal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I grew up religious. And so it was like, oh my God, you're 16. You are having a baby. Your life is ruined. Your life is done. And so that was the message that I got from um, my parents, from the church, from the school system, who, you know, the guidance counselor didn't know what to do with me, you know, she was like, oh, you got to go, you are setting a bad example for the rest of our school community here. Ouch, ouch. And so I was left um, really with like, more questions than I had answers about where my life was going. And now I'm bringing in a child into this earth that I have to figure out answers not just for me but for her and so that was really um it was it was a journey um, how old is she now she's 21 she just turned 21 right so i just want people to be aware that you know though you're looking like a spring chicken over there Thank that, you, we're you know. <laughs> <laughs> that this is years in development and and um and the reason i became such an instant fan is because um of, you know, just being of uh, 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 an urban upbringing and understanding um, the 
the stories with regards to like the Bodeguero, um, the 116th Street Festival, the, um, the, just the block being almost like your street family. I mean, it, there's just so many things that I, I was able to relate to just from having been raised in that type of environment. But the beauty of the way you did it, which I think is the most cleverest thing I've ever read, is that it's all done in poetic form. Every single story is its own poetry. Yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't think I realized that my life was so poetic growing up, you know, that it was its own art form because we are, I think, taught to see all of the ugly things um, or that, you know, our neighborhood is ugly or the way we grow up is ugly, you know, um, and there are ugly things in our lives and in our neighborhoods, but there's so much art and there's so much innovation um, and there's so much resilience, which is a word that I struggle with because we didn't grow up being like, I'm resilient, you know, right, I mean, right. we talked about, you know, the bounce back, oh, the bounce back is going to be, watch, watch when I bounce back, right? Um, but we, it, it wasn't um, framed as we were artists and we were always artists. And so that was something that I wanted to um, capture in the book is how beautiful our lives were and are. Um, and I really wanted young people to just look around at the regular, you know, like Cardi B says, the regular, regular, you know, the bodega, the, the um, fiao, like hood credit, right? Like this form of, of economics that is developed in our communities in order to take care of each other, right? There's this big um, push, uh, um, mutual aid ever since the pandemic happened. And I think that a lot of people might think that mutual aid is new. We've been taking care of each other. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Going to the Bodeguero with a little note on credit, you know? Right. The whole notebook, it was a That's system. We yeah. were organized, right? <laughs> and, <laughs> and so, you know, these are things that uh, we have um, cultivated out of the need to survive. Right. Because we knew that no one was going to take care of us if we didn't take care of us. And we did in those little ways um, is how we, we did that. And I really wanted to show that kind of mutual aid um, of the spirit, really. Um, Damn, in man, it's beautiful the way you shine a light, even with the language, right? Because, um, again, going back to my urban upbringing, I was like all excited reading what we called back then slang. Now they call it ebonics. But I was like, oh my gosh, she, she pulled out these words. That's how I knew. I said she was keeping record of this all these years. <laughs> and, you know, how do you, even if you don't keep record, this is like, you know, even if you don't write, right? These are things, these are memories that are ingrained in you. These are the, the things, the people, the situations that shape you. Um, and they deserve to be, those stories deserve to be told. And so I really wanted to share the story in a way that anybody could read this book and connect back to their own story and be like, oh, wow, I could, I have a story. You know, I didn't know that I could write about this. And, and, I didn't know that somebody wanted to read it, you know, and I want everybody to just um, know and understand that they are artists. They, whether you're a writer, whether you're, you know, an orator, um, you know, I'm a better writer than I am speaker. <laughs> so that's why I'm like, you know, uh, but I want everybody, to, yeah, I want everybody to connect to their stories and, and really know and, and whatever language that is, right? Whether you code switching or whether you, you know, writing your story in Spanish or writing your story in, you know, Ebonics or whatever it is, like you, you get to own that. Um, and that's important. And it is. And it's beautiful because uh, you wrote it so that it's accessible to those who are coming into themselves at an age that they're coming into themselves. And you've also made it available everywhere possible, um, especially the library, which is where you found yourself, which is uh, really the, the I, I don't think I gave it away, but it's a pivotal point uh, in the book that really sheds light on accessibility. Mm -hmm. And even, you know, I think that a lot of people, um, you know, the library is important, right? And I'm glad that, you know, you'll be able to find when we make it at the library, um, if you can't go cop it. Um, but I think that often we forget that there are things in our lives that may prevent 
even us from going to the library, right? I remember being 16, 17, I was out of school, I was trying to figure out what to do with my daughter. I didn't have time to go to the library. And so I missed out on a lot of text, a lot of um, books. Um, and I often felt like I, you know, I was out of school, so I was working. So I really wasn't getting the information as much as some of my friends who were in school, you know, folks who went to college and I'm still like hustling, trying to figure out, you know, what, what job is going to pay me next, uh, better so I can support my kids. So those, there are still barriers that prevent people from even going to the library. Right. Library. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think that we have to be, um, uh, a cognizant of that when we speak to young people who haven't read books right and you're like well you could go to the library and I, I don't think that's the approach right I think that we start um, with uh, showing young people the importance of their stories right, right. like you yep. a whole book you yep. are a book <laughs> that's exactly what you did you're like hey it took me all these years to put it in writing but uh, the beauty is is that you wrote it in such a way that it's welcoming to anybody to anybody and and you know that i mean me están regañando because we're out of time and i could just okay, keep okay. going on you know i know i know i know i'm know. going oh my gosh i'm so we'll, do, we'll link up but we'll link up in another format It'll, we'll do it <laughs> we have to we have to because i'm so proud of you and i'm so proud to be presenting your work to our viewers and and i can't say it enough congratulations i know the the book hasn't officially been released i unfortunately got a pre i mean i'm not unfortunate i fortunately got a pre-order, right? Uh, I fortunately got a pre-order. However, um, I understand that the pre-orders for when we make it are now available wherever books are sold. And once again, that's Elizabeth Velasquez, author, poet of When We Make It. And the official release, once again, is September 21st. And if you are interested in any information regarding where you can get the book, uh, you can visit Elizabeth no h velasquez and no what and no z and no z and no z elizabeth velasquez.com all right um bueno bobby c's weekly sports around the is coming up next yes thank you so much